What's up, everybody? It's your favorite other third party's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at Noble Class MCTEO2. I have no idea what that means, but it is some sort of third party Gundam that my good friend Derek B dropped off in my house when he was over here recently for an episode of Nerd Rage Radio. Kind of a two birds, one stone kind of deal. And he was like, hey, would you be interested in taking a look at this? And I was like, you know, why not? If it, you know, only cost me energy and effort, the least I can do. And here we are. Uh, first impressions are up on Patreon, but they were pretty positive. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at this fella. You have to forgive me because I don't know anything about Gundam. I've tried to get into it. It's not for me. So if I don't understand exactly what I'm looking at, you know, show me a little bit of grace. But that being said, we are going to take a look at this guy, but we are going to start with accessories. He comes with a display stand. It's lovely, honestly. Um, the has the pad printing paint on the base. This piece is metallic. I mean, metallic, magnetic. I'll show you the design here. It has like his face all the designs around the side, like the club suit. And this plate is obviously metal for the magnets to attach to. This piece inserts in. That's what connects to the, the robot or the, the suit. And then it came with another one, uh, same size and everything. I'm not sure. I can't figure out exactly what this is for. They don't connect or anything. Uh, so I'm not 100% sure, but it does come with another one. Now, underneath his crotch, you can pull off this little plate, which allows you to utilize the display stand. Um, and it works like a champ. He comes with an assortment of hands. We have left and right relaxed hands, uh, three different sets of holding hands that we'll go through, and then left and right kind of outspread or spread out finger hands or outreaching hands. And that's in addition to the two fist hands that you saw in the opening footage. He comes with a sword, beautifully painted. Um, all sorts of metallic paints. We have the turquoise on there as well, the blade, pad printing paint. All oh, this is gonna be said a thousand times because this thing is painted to the nines. You can take the hilt and extend it and that also kind of extends the blade and, and handle, uh, what is that called? Hilt a bit as well. And he can hold it in his holding hand. And the last thing you can do with the sword is if the shield is extended, which we're getting ready to get to in a second, you can insert the sword in to there. Um, just be careful though, because it does rub up against it. And I do worry about the effects it could have on the paint but you can do it. It can also be stored in these things and you know, a number of different kind of ways, depending on how you'd like to do it. Um, and these bases here are magnetic, so they'll connect to the base or this display stand as well. What good is a sword without a shield? And he comes with a shield. Um, silver accents, everything you see is painted. We have uh, pad printing paint underneath. We have tons of stuff as well details upon details upon details we also have gimmicks you pull down on that these two sides slip out then you can grab one of those and the whole thing extends you have uh, a number of ways to utilize this one of which is this peg here which can peg into any port that will support it but there is one on each forearm and it's probably best to have that on the side like that. But that's not your only option. You can use this adapter as well. Flip the handle down and you have two different options to plug in to connect it that he can hold on to as illustrated. You know. And he comes with this unit, which I'll be honest with you, I'm not really sure if it's a staff, a sword or a gun. Um, beautifully painted and detailed. If you extend or pull on the handle, it kind of opens this up, makes it look more like a gun or a weapon to me. And on this side, if you open it up, you can put batteries in there and you can light up the whole thing. Uh, but I don't have those, but you can do it. And he can hold that just fine. He comes with two different ponytail options. One's like, uh, they're a softer plastic too, which helps. But one's like a, a, it's like a white plastic with the red airbrushed on. And then the other one is more of a translucent yellow. Uh, they both operate the same way, which is at the back of the head, you can flip this piece up. Sorry, I already did it. Flip that piece up and then insert your ponytail. And now he's a robot with hair, if that's your thing. All right. Gimmicks wise, he has like a battle mode, I guess. I don't know. And I really don't know what I'm talking about, honestly. Uh, but if you pull up there it like extends the the lion's head and jaw for a little bit of extra flair you can do it on both sides obviously then the back of the neck extends these plates here on the front extend it's a little tight
but they do. And then on the back as well, you can extend these. There, there's one. Oh, you get the idea. And then his head also has a light up feature, but it, the batteries are not installed. Um, there's another electronics piece, obviously, that we already looked at that's not installed either. So that's just the, what it is. It is it is what it is, and it ain't what it ain't. So let's go ahead and take a look at the figure, and we'll get in tight on the head skull for Dennis. And I think it looks great. You know, I don't know exactly what it's supposed to look like, mind you. But that being said, I think it looks great. Um, everything that you see is painted. So the white is painted. The s Do we have any silver? No, just grays. Hold your horses, lads. Dark grays, light grays. Uh, what else do we have? The white. And then we have some kind of pad printed paint along the side. The head is on a ball peg. You don't really get anything back, unfortunately. You do get good down, which is nice. And then you get the left and right, but even that isn't great. A little bit of tilt side to side, but nothing really noteworthy, <clears throat> unfortunately. Let's go ahead and back him up a taste. We'll take a look at the torso. So, you do get a nice ab crunch, and a number of things move with it, uh, a la flame toys, like those pistons collapsing. If you see there, and then on the back, it exposes this other piece, but you do want to be careful just as you move it back that nothing nothing happens, you know. But look how far over he can get. Pretty impressive. We also have a teapot on a hinge, so that's nice. And then we also have a swivel. So pretty much right down the right down the lane. Do you know what I mean? We got a grays, golds, turquoise, a metallic turquoise that looks stunning. And what else? And then some pad printed paint details, plus the flats that are on there. Metallics we have right here. Are you ready for it? Silver and gold. It looks good. <clears throat> no complaints. As does that turquoise. It really pops. Moving on to the shoulder. The lion's head is on its own hinge, and it does connect to the shoulder itself. You can also... There's a number of different things with this, but you can move out the lion's chin a bit, too, to make some room. Kind of up to you there. And we have the arm die cast joint gets you out beyond 90 degrees. If you see that extra joint there, pivot it out for a great range. Plus the 360 around, but it is really tight. Really tight joint, so I'm not going to push it too far. Let's see what else there is to talk about. Plenty of accents. Oh, and we have... Um, a butterfly as well so no stone left unturned plenty of paint accents we have <clears throat> all sorts of pad printed paint there there the top of the lion's head and on the opposite side plus silver and gold and turquoise and the two grays are painted as well it's beautiful there's no doubt about it bicep once again tight joint but it is there bicep swivel with the gray paint pad printed paint more die cast joints here for the elbow which is double jointed and will get you uh, up until you bump into the lion's head so pretty much the full range we have a forearm swivel for better or worse not sure that you need it but it's there and then you have these side gauntlet pieces uh, which can be removed but we're not going to do it right this second more details around the wrists as you can see swivel they hinge in out and they even move a bit up down no issues there we'll back out a bit take a look at the lower body look at all this as much as i can anyway all right so we have hip skirts uh they do move up and out of the way to expose universal joints that are also you guessed it die cast move this butt flap as well we're just going to do one get you out to there pretty much the full van dam i say we give it to him and the swing down happens at the base of the pelvis and then you do get extra movement on the universal i'm trying not to bump up against this plastic though and cause any scratches but you can get at least about 90 degrees out if not more if you push it to its limits and all the way back thigh swivel built around the universal so that's done perfectly that's how i would have done it if i was designing it uh, 
you know, but I don't design toys, so what do I know about it? And then we have more paint and more pad printed paint on top. No issues there. We do have nice stuff going on with the knees uh, we, that we might be used to a la Flame Toys and other people I know do it as well. Number of things move here. So this moves, this moves. There's a joint up inside the thigh that swings down with pistons and stuff painted on. I'm trying to... Let's see if I can... There. The piston's there. Full range, up until you bump into his own stuff. And beautifully kind of sculpted and painted. Same goes for the lower part of the leg. We do have this ankle piece that moves independently. It'll help get you some space for an ankle tilt up, an ankle tilt down. And when you move the ankle tilt, if you look at all of this stuff, it will move along with it. Pretty cool. Makes it look alive. Feels organic. That's nice. The heel moves as well. And what do we have? We have a rocker and we have a toe bend as well in two different places. So really no stone left unturned. Um, phenomenally done. You know, I, I've looked, like I said, I've looked at some of these third party Gundams in the past. This is uh, a step beyond. They've gotten better. Um, they've gotten better. They've gotten more sophisticated. And uh, I love to see it. Size comparison wise, I don't really have any Gundams or anything necessarily to compare them to. But there he is next to Silverbolt, which is a pretty big Transformer from Fans Toys. And, you know, he's bigger. So this is a big robot. It'll probably look great in a detolf, especially if you get it posed and so forth. Wouldn't put too many in one case now, mind you. But good size for it. Final thoughts wise, we'll start with the negatives, and I don't really have a whole lot to say. I think it's pretty amazing, but nothing's ever really perfect, is it? Some of the joints are a bit tight, scary tight, specifically at the shoulders and biceps. Getting some of the gimmicks to kind of activate can be a little touch and go as well. Nothing that feels like it's going to break or do any real harm to it. It just feels like you got you to gotta be cautious. The instructions, if they had like an English version as well, would have been nice. Perhaps that's entitled of me. I'm okay with them doing it in whatever language they did it in. It'd just be nice to have both options. A lot of companies do that because I did find it a little tricky following along at some points or, or exactly what the point was of what they were trying to show. But once again, that doesn't have much to do with the figure because there's not a whole lot of bad to say about the figure. I'm really scrambling for something in fact, I'm just sort of rambling on now so that you can look at this pose longer. But I think I'm out of stuff to say. Moving on to the positives, I don't know what else I can say. I mean, it's painted beautifully. The materials feel great. Tons of articulation, double jointed elbows, double jointed knees with all this stuff that moves around and looks elegant, beautiful, and sophisticated. Swing down, universal hips, butterfly shoulders, ab crunch, teapot. Like, it has everything that you could possibly want. Tons of accessories, but not too much where you still feel like you could utilize all of them if you actually wanted to. Gimmicks and different looks, tons of attitude and display presence, metallic paints, flat paints, lime paints, pad printing paints, translucent accessories. Like It's just like, it's a full package piece, man. Extremely well done. Now, I don't know much about Gundam. Perhaps it's average. And I would never buy this because it doesn't mean anything to me. But aside from that, I can say it's awesome. And thus, a recommend for me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.